hey Claude, work on this feature for me. Claude is now going to look at this feature request for me and automatically complete it end to end. It will give you a live update including a list of things it's going to do and take it off as it goes along, all contained within its own branch ready for you to raise a pull request and review the work. And on the pull request it will even review its own work for code quality, security and a bunch of other standards. It's actually pretty cool and today I'm going to show you how to set this up. There are a couple of things you're going to need for this tutorial. First you'll need Claude Code installed on your machine and the GitHub CLI. Claude Code is really easy to install, simply head to this website and run this command. I've also created an entire video here if you need some more step-by-step -step instructions. What this does is gives you the ability to use Claude Code directly within your terminal. So if I open up a terminal window and type in Claude, we have our AI ready to go. The second thing you need is the GitHub command line interface installed and ready to go. So I'm going to exit out of that. To install this software, simply head over to this website, run brew install gh, or you can download the manual installation for your operating system. Once you've installed it, if you type gh, you should see a list of commands, which means it's installed successfully. Also, make sure to log into your GitHub account by running gh auth login. Go ahead and hit GitHub and follow the prompts. Now, I'm already authenticated, so I'll just skip ahead to the fun bit, which is the integration. We're going to go into a project folder that I have and start up Claude Code. From here, we want to run this command, slash install GitHub app. I'll put links to the official documentation down below as well to help you out if you need to reference it. Now, the first time you run this, it will actually ask you to give permission to GitHub. I can't bring that screen up because I've already run through the prompts, but it's a very straightforward process. It'll get you to select from a couple of default options to link into your account. It'll give you a six digit access code that you need in order to authenticate. And then once you're done, it will give you the option to set a couple of default workflows. It's a shame I can't show you step by step, but it is really straightforward. They guide you through the entire process. Now, a couple of things do happen when you link it. First, it gives Claude access to that GitHub repository. So I can ask Claude in natural language, things about the code base, its issues, the open pull requests. For example, I can ask it, what open issues do we have? And it's now going to use the GitHub CLI to get that information for me. It can then pull the details down and start working on it if we want it to. Now, the second thing that is going to happen is within the Claude desktop application or even their web app, if you head over to settings, connectors, you'll notice that it's also connected GitHub on the application side as well. Normally, Claude code and the application are kind of separate, but in this particular case, it gives access to both. No biggie, it's just something to be aware of. And the final thing is it is going to set up two default GitHub Actions for you. GitHub Actions are things that trigger automatically for you. For example, every time you push code back up to the repository, it can run unit tests for you, or if you raise a pull request, it can do code reviews. Think of Actions as things that trigger automatically and do certain tasks for you. So if we head over to our application here, which is called Harvest, if I head over to Actions, we can see that there are two workflows. These are default workflows that come out of the box. The first one automatically triggers whenever you comment Claude in any issue or pull request. Basically, Claude will come in, take over, and do whatever you ask of it, which is exactly what I showed you in the intro of this video. And the second one is a code review. Whenever a pull request is raised, Claude will come in, review it, and make sure that it abides by certain standards that we've set. In fact, you can see the two files that it used to create these workflows under this particular folder in whichever repo you're using. This is exactly what happens and all the steps that go along with it. We'll dive into this file in a little more detail towards the end of this video. For now, let me show you the flow end-to-end. -end. We're going to create a new GitHub issue. 
give it a title and say change color used. And now we're going to tell Claude to action. Claude is going to come along, take a look, kick everything off. It will add a little emoji to let you know it's looking at the task. It'll then create an action plan or checklist and tick it off in real time as it's working on the feature for you. Once it's done, it'll commit everything to a feature branch and have a button for you ready to click to create the pull request. I'm going to go ahead and click the button. Go ahead and create the pull request. And if we have a look at the files changed, we should see that it's updated it to the new color that we specified, which it has. Now, one of the cool things is if we head back to the conversation, because we raised a pull request, we're now going to kick off that second workflow automatically, which gets Claude to review its own work. This is where it does the security scanning, code standards, testing, etc. So here we can see it working in the background, and it'll add a comment with its findings. It's identified a couple of styling issues, given us a better recommended approach and all around just gave some improvements for our code quality standards. It also gives you an overall assessment telling you what you should do. Now in true vibe coding fashion, I'm gonna ignore all of this advice and we're just gonna merge this directly to production without checking or adding any tests in. Very dangerous, I don't actually recommend doing this in an actual product. Uh, but here we go, merge pull request, delete branch and we're good to go. So I'm going to do a git pull to pull down the latest changes. Uh, Claude, and I'm going to start the server up. Previously, the default color used was green. I updated it to purple. Now, I actually don't like this change, so we're going to get Claude to revert this. There we go, back to a better color. Now. The ability to integrate Claude with GitHub in this fashion is really cool because previously I would have to open up a terminal, go into VS Code, start Claude Code, tell it what to work on, supervise it, and then push the changes. Now I can just raise GitHub issues with every feature request I want Claude to work on and it'll just go away and do it. Now I've set this up so I have to tag Claude manually, but in theory I could have it automatically kick off whenever a new issue is raised without having to tag Claude. This is just a hobby app that I'm kind of working on to see how far I can push Claude. I want to stress you would never do unsupervised AI development in a production environment or anything work related. This is only really a use case for hobby applications, things that you might be doing locally. And I say that because there are several issues. First, Letting AI do things unsupervised is not a great idea. Secondly, it's not deterministic. That means every single GitHub action that gets triggered, I'm not guaranteed that it's going to go through the exact same steps. Every build might be slightly different. We really get a sense of that when we can see 85 workflows run. It took me 85 tries to get this working exactly the way I wanted to because every time I would run it, it would try and do something different. It would try to read a file it doesn't have access to, so I'd have to give it access to that. Then it would try to do a bunch of other things it didn't have permission to, and every time I would have to go in, I had to repeat that process more than 10 to 20 times before I finally got all the permissions correct. And even now, I'm not guaranteed it might still do something silly that triggers a red build. Having non-deterministic things like that in a pipeline that could potentially trip things up, it's probably not a good idea. Now, if you are wanting to muck around with this and kind of experiment, here are some tips to help you along the way. First, you're going to want to take a look at this Git repo, which has a couple of examples and, and all the technical documentation of how to use this Claude code action with GitHub. It has a couple of examples of things that you can do, as well as the technical documentation in here. Personally, I found searching both the technical documentation and both the open and closed issues to be a lifesaver. There were so many things that tripped me up. 
If we take a look at my Claude workflow file, a few things that weren't obvious to me straight away is you're able to specify what you want to add into the prompt. Now, if I uncomment this, it will override the default prompt that Claude uses. And the default prompt is how we get this nice list that gets updated in real time. So instead of setting a prompt like this, there's a separate section called append system prompt down the bottom here, where you have to set it under Claude args. This, instead of replacing the entire system prompt, it will append what you want on the end. So you get that nice list as well as everything else that you want to happen afterwards. The second thing to know is you can actually give it MCP integrations even through GitHub Actions. What I wanted to do in an ideal world is give Claude access to a Playwright MCP server. Playwright's an open source piece of software that lets our AI tool or anyone open up a web browser and take screenshots. The idea was I wanted it to implement changes, test it using Playwright, and then take a screenshot of the changes it made and attach it as a comment as evidence to me to know that the changes went through successfully. The way you do this is in your GitHub steps, you can specify what to install. Here I've told it to install Playwright and the Chromium browser. And then down the bottom, you can give an MCP config where you tell it what MCP servers to use. And then I appended the system prompt so I told it it had access to the Playwright server and to please use it whenever making UI changes and to take screenshots. And finally, the allowed tools, so every time you wanted to run individual commands like npm run dev, you had to specify them individually in this line here. So you'll see I actually have quite a bit. I also had to give it access to these two commands in order to use Playwright successfully. Now, my utopia of having screenshots automatically uploaded as a comment didn't actually come to fruition because you can manually drag and drop screenshots into comments using the web browser but the GitHub command line interface doesn't support image uploads, which means even though Claude had Playwright, it took the screenshots, it had no way to upload it successfully. It's technically not possible through the GitHub command line. So I tried to tell it to use Playwright instead, but just ran into a bunch of issues. The best I could come up with is this. In this previous pull request that I got it to do, I asked it to change three different colors. I picked three at random. While it couldn't attach the image as a comment, it did add them to the repo so I could check it out myself. Now, these are horrible color changes. I would never approve them. Unfortunately, adding it directly into the repo was the only way I could come up with. I don't like it. I'm, I've actually removed it completely. So I'm back to using just the default workflows with the MCP Playwright. Where this is going to come in handy for me moving forward is whenever I am coding with Claude Code and I'm about to wrap up for the day, I normally have so many ideas in my head that I want to capture. So now I can just tell Claude, hey, can you capture these three or four things and create GitHub issues for me? Even though I'm about to finish for the day and go to bed, I can just get Claude to work on those three or four things in the background. And then when I wake up in the morning, the features will be ready and delivered. So that's the way I'm using it moving forward. I'd love to know, what do you guys think about this GitHub integration? Do you love it? Are you gonna start using it? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.